Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is episode 26 of the Knitting Man podcast. And uh, this week is actually the Crochet Man pod- podcast because my brother Paul, we've got an interview with my brother Paul. And most of this episode is going to be concerned with crochet. Welcome back. So uh, this episode is mostly going to be an interview with my brother Paul, who's a crocheter. And uh, this week, uh, Mrs. Smith has been uh, messing around with Facebook. And you might have seen that we've had a lot of uh, activity on Facebook and TikTok because she's properly down with the kids. And what that has meant is that we've got a lot of new followers. And so I just wanted to point out very quickly, because everyone else has seen this like 100 times before, what I like doing. So I like making picture knits like this. And I like making off-piste knits, farewell, off-piste knits like this. So there's no pattern. I make them up as I go along. So that's just a quick overview of what this channel is about for the new people. First of all, Mrs. Smith has said that um, uh, it's backed by popular demand. Um, we ha- A lot of people have picked up on the fact, on a few things really. One, we had no mug of the week. So it's back with a vengeance. That's a lovely mug that I picked up this week. Uh, £2.50 and it's Devon Moore, uh, which is very nice, like a handmade mug. I just ran up the stairs then, which is why I'm out of puff. Um, And the other thing, we're going to do a new thing. I think it was Carla. Was it Carla? I don't know. But one of our regulars said, are you you wearing, what T-shirt was I wearing? I was wearing a Pogues, Fairy fairy Tale of New York. And they said, oh, you you ought to do T-shirt of the week. So today, don't get my belly in, Joe. Visible Menders, darn it. So that's T-shirt of the week. So that's a new thing that we're going to bring in. I probably won't do it every week. Um, so with, without more ado, we're going to go straight into my, inter- my interview with my brother, Paul. Now, you might notice that the quality isn't that great because we had planned to meet up with Paul and he got COVID and we were going to film it and... What's happened is that um, we, we've actually filmed it on Alexa. Is she going to kick in now? Can't say her name. Anyway, uh, so we filmed it on Alexa. Um, so the quality is not great. And obviously we're filming with, for those of you that don't know, uh, everything's filmed with one of these. So we just use uh, a rubbish iPhone that one of the children uh, handed down to us, handed up to us. And we also edit our videos on a broken laptop that was also given to us by one of the kids. Um, But if you would like to invest, and we have long-term aims to actually eventually buy a camera. And I mean, I know people that are doing these YouTube videos with tens of thousands of pounds worth of equipment and we're just using uh, so if you would like to um, help us to grow our channel and improve our equipment um, then there's a link below to our patreon and um, you can go and have a look at our patreon you don't have to join but you can join if you want to and if you want to support our channel thanks very much so without more ado here is my interview or Joey's in there too. You might actually just catch a little glimpse of her. 
uh, my interview uh, with my brother Paul, the Young Gods. Hi. Okay, so I don't know how I'm going to edit this, but uh, hello everyone. Um, I'm too loud. <laughs> well, my brother's a boomer as well. We're both boomers. Um, uh, Joe's telling us off, being, or me off for being too loud. Now, Paul, you're about 300 miles away because I'm in uh, uh, Cornwall and um, you are in Essex. So we're doing this because you had COVID when we were going to film in the middle. And um, so we are, yeah. so I'd like to introduce you, everyone, to my brother, Paul. And um, uh, Paul is, um, oh, I'll have to put it up maybe on the video. Uh, you are Yarn Gods on Instagram. Is that correct? Yes. And you're Yarn Gods on Instagram because yes. we went to the Alley Pally or something. We went to a, a, a st you, yeah, you, you're gonna, you can answer this one if you want. Start, I should be asking you questions, shouldn't I? Because it's meant to be an interview with you. But they were selling bags at the show and all the bags were yarn goddess bags and I think I mean there were a few men we weren't the only ones there but we were like oh have you got any yarn gods bags and they were like no we've only got yarn goddess so at that time you were setting up your Instagram and that so you decided to use yarn gods as your name for for your Instagram so anyway I knit and you crochet and I've got no idea how we both ended up doing well i know how i ended up doing what i do but how did you how and when did you start crocheting um i was having a think about this yesterday and actually i don't remember so i think we must have both started at the same time i can't remember how old you were but I, I, oh, I, can can, I, just, I don't remember learning it. Can I just point out this time, people will think that, you know, they can't work out who the older and who the younger brother is. <laughs> uh, um, but, yeah, Joe said, we look like twins at the moment because we've both got beards. She says, you look like Grizzly Adams and Bear Grylls. Well, that don't work. Who's Bear Grylls? There were a pair of grills. He hasn't even got a beard. It's the name. It's the names. No, no. Which one? Oh, which grills. one of us is Bear Grills? I don't know. No idea. Uh, anyway, so, yes, so you, you're the same as me. You started um, crocheting probably very young. But, but I don't know how we, we both... You know, because because I don't really crochet, uh, you know, apart from I do a little, and you don't really knit at all ever, do you? No, no, I've I've never knitted. I can knit, but I just find it a different part of my brain. A crochet works for me, yeah. um, but knitting, that for some reason I don't understand, doesn't work for me at all. So I I, can, I don't remember when we when I started. You might remember better because you might have been. A little bit older because you are older than me just to let them know you well, are they wouldn't have me, worked yeah. it out you see they, they wouldn't except my beard is slightly whiter but then i dye it yeah joe's trying to keep me from shouting because i have a tendency to shout i dye it so i look more like father christmas <laughs> so yeah so going back to that i don't actually remember starting that but i do remember not ever having knit, knitted I only remember crochet from the start. So I think our grandmother, or our mother, I think it was grandmother, I think it probably was... decided one of us is going to knit, one of us is going to crochet. Yeah, I think it was Nanny Bell, who was our mum's mum, was probably, because, I yeah. mean, she was, she was absolutely amazing with us, wasn't she? Because all the time, you know, she yeah. was keeping us occupied, you know, it was games or learning new things. And uh, it's difficult because I've tried with Arthur, who's seven, and he's got no interest at all. And uh, and obviously he's got no interest either. So, but yours, you've got two sons. You're married. But that might be because he's doing that because he's doing knitting, though, Gary. You broke if up. If you're crochet hook and talk about 
cliche, he might be more interested because I think it uses a different part of the brain. Right. Right. You broke up a bit there, but I think people got the gist that you're saying that trying with crochet it might work. But then, you know, I, you, yeah. it, it's difficult. I, I think it's difficult with children now because their, their attention spans are not very good because they're, they're on computers all the time. But um, recently he's really taken to chess, which, uh, and I've found that he concentrates quite a lot. Joe probably want me to cut this bit yeah, out. Yeah, you're waffling on off yeah. the subject Joe's, now. Joe says I'm... <laughs> I'm okay. right. You're supposed um, to be interviewing Paul. Okay, it? back to you, Paul. So, um, at, at some point you've got some crochet there to show us what you do, but uh, when did you, yeah. so, so you, you, you learned to crochet at a young age, but when did you really take it up? Um, when I did um, A-levels, so I did what was called at the time a level in 3D, I think it was called 3D design or wood, metal, ceramics and plastic, A level. So I did lots of pottery at the time, as well as A level music. So I, I, at that point, I was doing a little bit of 3D. So I t probably at the age of 16, I spent a lot of time on crochet and then all the way through my degree. Um, so I did a degree in sort of combined arts, music and, uh, and art. So I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time probably then crocheting, and then since then probably mostly every day. Yeah. I, I, I can't actually probably in the last five years I can't really think of a day when I probably haven't had a crochet hook in my hand or been thinking or been buying wool or something to do with crochet. It just keeps you active, keeps your brain active, and I think that's you know for me it's um I, again when when I'm crocheting. I can be doing other things. So I can be watching things on television. It switches my brain off, enables me. I mean, I don't have to look at what I'm doing no. anymore. No. Um, and it becomes a bit uh, relaxing. Yeah, it's like me. I don't, I don't have to either. But, so, but similar to me, I don't work from a pattern. Or if I do, I create that pattern. No. So I can't get it wrong anyway. But you, you've never worked from a crochet pattern. I, I mean, I, I can, I, I obviously can read patterns. I just find it really boring. Um, I, making somebody else's things for me is a little bit boring. Yeah. So, you know, um, and following a pattern means that um, I actually have to concentrate a bit more than I probably would when I'm just free flowing. So my stuff, I know, I don't, I don't follow a pattern. So anything I make, um, so if I'm trying to, you know, emulate something or trying to look at something or create something, it is purely by looking and then realizing what stitch it needs to be and then constructing it. So I'm generally at the moment, I'm making a lot of hats. So I've got a lot of requests from people I work with and, and people to buy hats um, and to give hats to people. So I'm making a lot of hats at the moment. Uh, ready for the winter, um, but I, I, over the years I've done fairs and things where you know generally the, the, my stuff is hats, bags, scarves, throws. They're the yeah. main things. I, I, I generally don't make clothing, no. so I, I don't do the traditional squares. So I don't you know a lot of people do granny squares, squares to create things. No. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't do that. I mean, I can. I have, you know, in the past when probably, you know, 25 years ago, I would have made, you know, 200 squares and combined them together into making a blanket. I don't generally do that when I'm making throws and blankets anymore. I just create something, you know, freehand because I find it more interesting than probably following a pattern or creating squares. So I've got things. That, I mean, what I'm on at the moment is um, a little skull cap. So you can see from that, the stitches, it's uh, almost like a rib, it's like a traditional knitting rib. And then you go, go to a half rib. So you've got two stitches at the start and then decrease it to one stitch. And what it does, it creates a really nice structure of the hat um, and quite solid and round structure as a hat. That's they're the things I make at the moment. And they're for me. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice fit. I can and imagine. because of the stitch, it stretches 
Yeah. See, I'd like one of those as well. well. Be my birth my birthday's coming up in January. <laughs> Yeah, so they're really nice. So they're quite uh, chunky, quite chunky yarn. Is, th is that knitted in a wool or is it cotton? Because you use co cotton quite a lot, don't you? Yeah, yeah that is. I use cotton. I mean, I mean, I've got a cotton version of the same thing with a with a sort of. Uh, but that's cotton. That's whole cotton. And again, pick it up off the floor. Um, again, it's quite structured. Um, so I mean, I'm just trying different ways ways at the moment different stitch in the middle there yeah but um the ribbing ribbing it so it's you know fits on the hat fits on your head nicely so i mean that's what i'm doing at the moment but see i generally, didn't i didn't know um, you could do rib with um crochet so that's a a um a new thing there to me but well, it's just using a different part of the stitch. You use the reverse part of the stitch. So you do two stitches at the front of the stitch and two stitches enter, entering from the back. Yeah. And these, I, I start at the bottom. So I, I, I start at the bottom, then decrease. Some people start at the top and then increase. But I start around the bottom and then decrease. I mean, you can just about, I don't know if you can, but you can see where I've decreased. Yeah, uh, you can see. Yeah, you can um, see where you brought that, it in. You know, that is chunky. That is quite chunky, but I do use quite fine, you know, fine stuff. I mean, I mean I've got some fine cottons here. I do a lot of beret things, which is quite fine cotton for little kids and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, that's using very fine cotton. But generally, generally I like to use cotton or, or, or wool. Acrylics, they're okay, but I mean, that, that's, that's, um, that is actually wool, that one. Yeah, it's lovely, that. Yeah. Um, um, so the other things, I'll just go through some of the other things. Yeah. yeah, we can. Just let me just ask you one question, because I'm, I'm obviously we're going to get yeah. this question if I don't ask it. Uh, people will be saying, where can they buy yeah. your patterns? Um, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew the answer. If, if you... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all in my brain. So, um, yeah, I, I just look at, I measure someone's head. And then I just take it from there. And you just got to make sure you have an even amount of stitches. Because when you're going round with these, you have to have an even amount of stitches. So you can't have a single one in the rib. So, yeah, do you know what I mean? No. You have to have an e yeah, yeah, Eve, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just before you um, go through some of the other stuff that you, you make, um, why is. Knitting better than crochet. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, there are a few reasons why knitting is better than crochet, but there are a few reasons why crochet is better than knitting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So my, um, I, yeah. So I'll, I'll go through it. I, I, I've looked at some of your patterns. Yeah. I've looked at some of your pictures on your 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 knitting yes that for me uh no i think i'm quite visual and not quite able to do it it doesn't look right in crochet oh. so when you're trying to create a um a detailed visual a pattern in crochet it, it's very difficult unless you're using things like mosaic st stitch which yes. again seems to be very precise and square rather than three flowing yes. i mean i have done some stuff in the past but, it's, but 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 I think knitting really is a better way of putting that across. It isn't impossible. It's just not yeah. um, not as the, the people that forward. have the people that have converted my patterns into crochet have used mosaic crochet. Not that I know what that is, but that's what they've used. Yeah. Um, but is would you say that crochet has the upper hand? when you want to create a when you want to m make a shape yeah yeah I, I, you know, going back to when i was doing my degree i mean i i was i was making a lot of crochet um it didn't get into my end of year show but i was making a lot of 3d design crochet for my end of year show um you know crochet domes and stuff like that to create create 3D design. I, I think that's that. much easier, much easier to create. 
Um, I, I, it, it might be interesting for people to know because people, uh, people on the show do know Joe's sister, but you were both on the same course. Um, at yes, Brighton. interesting. In the, well, yeah, in the same year. And you've both gone on to do different things. Like until you recently, you were head of the art college in South End. Is that correct? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, back, I'm back teaching music. My music is my, my, Which is my life, field, really. really. So I'm back teaching music. Yeah, but I mean, for, for many, for about 10 years, I was head of a large creative uh, arts department in Essex of a, a sixth form college. But, you know, I, I retired from that a few years ago. I'm now back teaching music. So, yeah, completely different path from Emma, yeah. even though we we're on exactly the same course. But that was the course. That course was mm. about creating, you know, different aspects of creative arts. And, and we all uh, moved into different things. Yeah, and am I right in thinking that was the first year of that course? No, there were two years before us. Um, yeah, because Luke Cresswell, who do, who um, created Stomp, was on the same course as us. Wow! But he was two years ahead of us. Oh right. And of course, for that, uh, a lot of people know um, Joe's sister Emma as the Unknitting Widow, um, uh, but she's a writer for TV and film. Yeah, it sounds like a good course. Um, okay, so at this point might be a good point for you to show us some of your crochet, what you do. So that the hat that you did. Yeah. So um. Go on. So now you go, Gary. What I'm you saying that, that hat that you were doing there was like retro, reminds me like a 1920s or something. The girl's hat that you showed before. Yeah. So we yeah. When I, when I did craft fairs, I sold quite a lot of those sort of beret shapes. Mm. And the, the flowers on the front are like little brooches, so you can take it off and on. So, yeah, very retro. And at the time, they sold quite well. I, I used to do um, fairs and stuff like that for, for a few years, a few years back now, pre-COVID. Um, and the, the hats used to sell really, really well. I mean, you can, you can take them off. They're sort of beret shaped. Mm. Uh, and some were less patterned than this, maybe plain colours. Yeah. Um, but that's what I did quite a lot of. But the, the other thing that sold quite well is little, sort of little kids' bags, you know, yeah, sort yeah. of um, little pockets and bags like that. So you did quite a few of those. But generally at the moment, I'm doing throws. So it's throws are the big oh, thing. Oh, really? So um, I've just so I've just I've just finished recently uh, a big. I mean, I, actually, this is in the same stitch. That sort of double uh, ribbed. Uh, stitch and so chunky, for the back room. chunky yarn again. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice for the winter. So and then that, we have the other one I've just fit. Um, so they, that 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 would crochet quite quickly. You could do that quite quickly, that because it's yeah, yeah absolutely. But you know, um, the, this one probably took you know a number of months. I mean, this is just like different grades and different. Again, a diff, slightly different stitch, but I mean, it's like, um, you know, two metres by one, one and a half metres. This one, and that probably took months. That took a couple of months. This yeah. one probably took, a, you know, a couple of hours night for a month. Yeah. And you get, you get it pretty, uh, pretty much finished. But that's, a, that's, a, that's the, a nice little combo. It goes in the other room, actually. But yeah, yeah, so a lot of blankets and then, you know, pillows to match the sofa. You know, no, again, that's lovely. playing crochet. Yeah. And, a, and a, yeah, nice striped pillows. It near the camera, a bit so. retro. Sorry. But I don't do squares. Oh. I don't do Joe, traditional squares. Joe says, can you hold them nearer the camera? You need to. And slowly. And slow, yeah. slowly. I get told off a lot yeah. like, by this because, Paul, uh, in the last episode, I, I found some, some of my old uh, whips in the loft and uh, and i just quickly i go like that you know and um and people say oh no yeah. no please put it on instagram so we can see actually you know so it's not moving uh yeah so if you could if you wouldn't mind holding a few things up for uh joe just to, um I mean, that, that is cotton so it's, it's cottons it? again but it, it has a little bit of movement and while, while, you're, while you're just holding a few different things up, uh, let's talk about stash. 
Now I have a problem that I have too much. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah. Have you got a lot of stash? I had to. Ch I have to select my words very okay. carefully because Mrs. Smith tells me off if I say certain phrases. But have you got a lot of stash? Um. I would say I haven't got enough. Yes. Um, but my wife would say that I've got too much. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's the same. I've got, um, I've got... Yeah. Yeah. You you can never have too much. My theory is because you, they're, they're, you know, there's always a colour or a particular cotton or something that you might need. And it seems silly not buying it if it's there. Yes. At, at a decent price. It's That's the decent I... price thing, isn't it? Because I'm, I I buy a lot of like. It's not second hand yarn because it's not being used. But I buy I you know I buy a lot in charity shops or um, you know sometimes if you've got those bins you know the ends you know the ends of lines and that yeah. So, yeah, charity shop, charity shop. Th this week, my wife doesn't know. I always know she's over there. Uh, this week, charity shop, ten balls yeah. of wool, yeah. grey wool. Yeah. It's a slight mix, but grey wool, fifty p a ball. Yeah, get in. So you can't knock, can you? You no to that. No. And and the other thing is, of course. I think you're in South End on Sea, which is a city now. Yeah. It's a medium-sized yeah. city, really. How many railway stations are there in South End? Nine. Yeah, in the South End area, there is. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, how many wool shops are there? One, Westcliff. Yeah, there's one, in, one in South End. There's one in South End now. Well, not it's in Westcliff. Yeah, there's not one in South End itself. There's one in Westcliff, and then you've got to go further afield. You've got to go to like not Hadley, um, Thundersley, which is you know outside but, of this huge even, city. Yeah, but even then, you wouldn't want to buy it from there because it's ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But surely, with there being so few um, yarn shops, eventually all this stuff that you're buying in the charity shops is going to dry up. You would think. But, you know, who knows? See, see, I thought that. For, for a couple of weeks, I hadn't found any, um, any wool. Yeah. Um, for a few weeks. And then, uh, uh, Friday, was it Friday? I had a couple of hours in uh, the charity shops. And came back with uh, about 25 balls of uh, wool. Yeah, but you kept it quiet. Louise didn't know that until now. She's just finding out. No, she's got no idea. Even now, she's, she doesn't believe it. But yeah, um, yeah. I was so I was so lucky. I, what did I get? I got some nice stuff. Um, yeah, that wool. I got some some bits that I probably never used. But oh, know, that's like a sock yarn. Me. Sock yarn. That's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, DP, you can't grumble. No. Um, and then I got some blues as well. Where, where, I mean, yeah, that's that's a it's it's a mix. It's wool and acrylic. Yeah. But I got five balls of that. For 50 oh, again, you can you can't say no, really, can you? But I mean, you you would you would use that in um, one project? You would. Sorry, we talked over each other. Yeah, you go. You go. I was going to say, um, uh, you would use that in one project, so the mixed yarn would be, in, well, probably a hat, wouldn't it? So you wouldn't actually have other uh, other yarn types in, in with it. Yeah. No, I tend to keep, if I'm cotton, I stick to cotton. If I'm doing acrylics or wool mix or something, I'll keep to that wool mix. Yeah. Because you do want to wash these things sometimes. Yeah, you don't so, want one part sinking at a different rate. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, what? Yeah, but yes, um, I would say 
to my store, Gary. Going back to my store, I've got um, I've got a cupboard, and I've got a chest of drawers. Yeah. And I've got a lounge. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> well, I I am at the moment. We we are. I've moved a load of records from the loft, and I'm sorting through those and trying to get to the stash. And uh, it is time that it's time that we sorted it, and uh, we're going to do a big episode on that. But I think, which is be one of our next few episodes. But I think we're going to get a lot of questions for you from this episode. So I'd like to do this again, maybe in a few weeks. Crochet corner. Crochet corner with yarn gods. Yes. Um, sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's quite easy. Much easier to do it over something like Zoom or yeah. Alexa or whatever, whatever those things. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me to get to you is really difficult. Yes. Well, we're 300 miles away, so, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we, we're on 17 minutes on this second piece of video, so we'll call it a day for now. And then if people have got questions for you, then we'll, uh, we'll do another Q&A session with you maybe in a couple of weeks, which would be good. Maybe next month, uh, come out next month sort of thing. So, um, and we could do like Crochet Corner once a month even if uh, if there's enough interest. But um, I mean, as well as the, the few things that you've shown us, I'm sure you've got hundreds of other things as well. Yeah, loads of stuff. Absolutely loads of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot full. Yeah, of stuff, of, of actually made things. Have you really? I did the loft as well, did I? In the loft. Couldn't hear that. As yeah. well as the lounge and the stack. Yeah, but the the loft is completed items. Yes, that's correct. Because every so often you'll do a yarn fair, at, or a no, yarn fair, you'll do a craft fair and sell your completed items. Yeah. And do you have a label yes, in there? Yes, it is. Do you, do you have labels in your items? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. I have Young God labels. Oh, yeah. So people will know if they've got one of your things or if they find one of your things, yeah, it's a Young God label. Okay, great stuff. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Um, we'll say goodbye for now. You can stay on, but we'll say goodbye to the viewers for now, yeah. and uh, we'll we'll see them all next time. So uh, yeah, so sorry about the quality of that, but as I say, we're working with old technology. Uh, I th I think the main thing is that a lot of you will have questions, uh, follow up questions for Paul. And so if you'd like to put them down below and then uh, next time uh, we do, we're hoping to do a Zoom next time, which we will record and the quality should be better. Crochet Corner. Crochet Corner, Joe. Very good. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yes, quickly before we go, um, thank you to all of our patrons. Um, I think we're working on getting all your names on the screen at some point, so they'll roll down at the end of the episodes. Um, thank you to everyone that is a patron. Uh, if you want to, go and have a look at our patron page. Uh, there's, uh, we're building it, but there's extra footage. Uh, there will be uh, free PDF downloads. Uh, there's discounts from our shops, our Etsy and our Ravelry. And coming soon, that Joe is working on stuff like merchandise, so that this sort of stuff. Um, so uh, that's it for today. And the main thing, sorry, Joe. The main question is: Is knitting better than crochet? Oh, so did you hear that, people? Joe would like to know if knitting is better than crochet, or is crochet better than knitting? Um, and the other thing that I get told off a lot for is forgetting that Joe's here. How could I ever do that? And tail off at the end without saying it's good night from me and it's good night from her. Good night.